Welcome to another episode of Chat with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Anthony Luciano from Money. What's up, man? How's it going? Not too bad. Same old shit, man. How you been? Eh, not I, bad. This whole tie is fucking heat, boy. Yeah, man. It's supposed to be like that for the next three days. Uh, they said uh, tomorrow, Friday, and hopefully Saturday we have a hopefully Saturday we have a break in the weather. Yeah. So uh, people don't know, but you lit the cigar the other day, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're probably going to be shocked when they see that one. Yeah. Because <laughs> we yeah, we're outdoors. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to know, how did you get linked up with some, the Sabellas? Uh, Alley Boy Price ago hooked me up with him. When I, uh, when I was doing the stock fraud and the stock scans with the Vatican, we had a lot of stuff up here, and he was friendly with the old man, Carlos Marcello. You know, he says, go down. He goes and see him. He had it all set up. I got on the plane, went down. He picked me up at the, um, uh, what was that airport? Um, the one named after that singer, the trumpet player, um, Louis Armstrong oh. Airport. Louis Armstrong? Yeah, Louis Armstrong Airport they picked me up at. And He's I went gonna... down there, and I had, a, I had about... Uh, Try to think when I went down there, I had I think about five or ten million dollars worth of stock with me. Counterfeit stocks when I went down there. And they bought them all? No, they moved it all. Oh, they moved them for you. Yeah, they moved it. I got my you know, I brought my end back to New York. They got their end. I stood down there were, quite a while with them. Were they doing a they were doing a ton of stock frauds, right? But they were doing everything down there. I mean they had their they had a lot of their own stuff down down there, you know what I'm saying? The old man ran all Louisiana, New Orleans, all that area, all the state and all the surrounding states. The old man he ran all that. So the five families had did they have a lot of connections? They had a lot of connections throughout the country. Oh yeah, there was, yeah, they definitely had a lot of connections throughout the country. But Carlos Marcello, he controlled like uh about four or five states. He controlled the states themselves. Uh, when they went in and went out. He he came, didn't it? Wasn't he involved with the Kennedy Kennedy thing? That's the rumor. I don't know. I don't know. That was before my time. What do you think? Do you think that's true? Listen, I heard so many stories about Kennedy. Who the hell knows what's true and what ain't? Any, I mean, anything is possible. Did he have something to do with it? I have no idea. I won't even have to guess. Hold on. Let me Too try to find stories. Huh? There's tons of there's tons of stories, man. Plenty of stories. There's too many stories about Kennedy. You're not gonna know the truth. All right, I'm trying to find well, some I, of these comments. Someone wanted huh? to know. Someone wanted to know what's your opinion on Sammy the Bull. Truthfully, I got no opinion of the guy. I just don't. Uh, I don't like him. Meaning, I just don't like the way he is. You know, what I'm saying he did everything and blamed it on John. So I, I yeah. got no opinion of the guy. I just don't like him. Um, know, Sammy, Sammy did a lot of things, which is fine. Whatever the reason why he turned against John is his reason, but he turned around and he blamed everything on John. Sammy did a lot of shit without getting clearance from John. He just went and done it. And then I heard he, that too. He, he ran and he uh, said, "Oh, John told him to do it. Why didn't he just take the?" You know, if you got bold enough to do it, then you take the heat when it comes down. Yeah, that's most people. Uh, a lot of people just like to tell and uh, put the blame on someone else. You know, you break up, Bill. You break enough. A lot of people like to tell and shit and just put the heat on someone else. Yeah, I mean, he did what he did, Sammy. He profited. He made a ton of money. You know, the heat came down. Take the fucking heat. You're the one who did it. John didn't give you the approval for half the shit you did. Yeah, man. Um, damn. Uh, Bill, you're still breaking up. You got like like crackling in your voice when you're talking. I can't hear you at all now. Someone wanted to know, did you know Larry Mazza? I might have met him, maybe, but I don't even I don't remember the guy. Larry Mazza, I never met him. 
Yeah, our uh, our what? Bill, I, I can't hear you. Our, our connection is fucked up. Uh, so yeah, I'm I, okay. I don't know. Is your phone charged? You want you want to shut it and do it again? Yeah, yeah. hold on. Just I'll go the, out. Just tell the people to hold on, and we'll shut it down and turn it on again. Yeah, yeah. Everyone in the in the room, hold on. We're gonna try to redo it and get it back on. So just stay right here, and we'll be right do I have back. To shut down too. Yeah, or I'll do it first, and then you do it. All right, go ahead. All right, I'm back. So Anthony's going to come right back. And uh, if you guys have any questions, put your questions in the side so that um, he can answer your questions for you. He didn't know Larry Mazza, but he ran into him. He said he bumped into him at a club once or something like that, at a social club. What's up, Lexi? I got a real big surprise coming this week for you guys. It's a good one. Good, man. All right, wait. Hold on. Okay, let's try it now. All right, man. Sounds good. So, someone said, did, did he say he was involved with the... Anza Heist. Who? Oh. Someone said that about oh. you. Someone on the comments. Hold on. Right. I'll, uh, I'll tell you who. Uh, A. A. Cresco, Cresto said, Am I hallucinating or did he say he was involved with the Lutanza Heist? When Jimmy Burke came to everybody with that score and nobody could figure out, I went down to Miami and I got Maya Lansky and I brought Maya Lansky up. And Maya Lansky is the one who put it together. So people don't know that. Like, um, the FBI knows that. Because they had Maya Lansky, under, listen to me, they had Maya Lansky under surveillance. And I never knew that. None of us never knew it. And the score still went off. How we found out when I was writing my book, when the bullet hits the bone, my co-author, my ghostwriter, she got in touch with the FBI and they showed her the papers where Maya Lansky was under surveillance. And every time that we went through the airport, but meanwhile, we still made the score go off. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy that, yeah. um, cause they, they were, they were watching him till he died. Right. Cause they thought he had all that money. Oh, he did have all that money. Where? What, he had it in different bank accounts or something? He had it in Switzerland. He had it in Zurich. He had it all over. He had money. And then he had money invested in the casinos. Uh, yeah, when the... he, had, he had a lot of bankers who were friends of his. And when he got sick, all the money that the bankers had for him, he got all his money back from the bankers. And he put it in the uh, they put it in the Switzerland bank accounts in Zurich. He put it in, put it all over there, and he had his uh, his children's names on it. Yeah, so they they must have got money when he died. Of course they did. They weren't fucking broke. I know one of them is running the mob museum. One of the grandsons, I think. That's a grandson. That's not his son. It's grandson. Yeah, the grandson. The grandson. His son. His son, Buddy, is the one that they said died in poverty in the hospital, which, as far as I know, Buddy had some money, but he spent all his money. Like a, He spent money like a drunken fucking whore. <laughs> so that's why they cut him down. Yeah. So, um, you know? did you go down to Florida a lot to see Meyer? Yeah, all the time. But when he got sick, 
or rather when he died, they wouldn't let me go down to Florida because I was out on bail. I was going away. I had, uh, yeah, I was out on bail. I had the case. I had what they called a pre-designated area where I was going to turn myself into the prison. So when he died, you know, I turned around and I said, you know, listen, I wanted to go. They said, no. I said, look, I'm willing to pay for the marshals to fly there with me. I'll pay for the whole thing. Just give me five minutes there and we'll be right back on the plane. They refused. They said, no. Yeah, they ain't trying to hear that shit. Yeah, they didn't want it. They wouldn't do it. Yeah, man. Well, so yeah. um, so when he died, were you in prison? No, I was out on bail. I was waiting to go to yeah. prison. Yeah. In other words, I, I got convicted and I had a pre, and they gave me a pre designated area. Yeah, yeah. To go to prison yeah. in full. So they gave me the date when I was supposed to go in, but they wouldn't let me go see him. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah. So um one of the questions someone had was about um being uh an enforcer. All yeah. right. Uh I'm Larry it says, hey, Bill, I'm not sure if I heard it correctly in one of Anthony's episodes. Was he an enforcer? He said, everybody knows is a higher status than a made man. And in another episode, he said he was a made man. Did he yeah, get right, made listen. after or am I confused on the timeline? He's confused. I got made before I was an enforcer. You cannot be an enforcer unless you're made. You have to be a member. So yeah, they but they were you out first, and then I became an enforcer. In other words, what I basically was doing, I was doing pickups, and I had my own business. If there was a problem, I was handling problems. Once I got straightened out, then I got the official title of the of an enforcer. So they're not going to give that title to someone that's not a made man, right? No, you do not get that. No, no. But they would still have people that are not made men. Picking up money. Yeah. Things like work, that. I'm sure, of course. Yeah. But they're just not going to have a title. Right. They ain't going to have no title. Yeah. And, and when you when you become an enforcer, you get a different level of respect once you're already a made man, obviously. Well, yeah. Yeah. Once you're, an enfor once, you're, once you're an enforcer, you're on a different level altogether. Yeah. In other words, when you, you got to go to a sit down, you can go. You just tell your boss, look, I got to sit down. I got to go to call me. And you go. You can sit down with any boss you want. Because an enforcer, basically, he makes sure that the whole family follows the rules. And if you don't, well, then he does what he does best. You know? Someone, so I, someone said, Anthony, what's gangster cigars? You slinging stogies? <laughs> that's my cigar company. Yeah, you sell cigars, that's right? Cigar yeah, but I got the club. I got the company closed right now. Because, you know, I mean, I'm doing other things with the book and with the movies and stuff. Yeah, man. Make well, sure you guys go. Company again next year. Next year, I'm going to open up the company again. Make sure you guys go check out his book, When the Bullet Hits the Bone. Where can they get your book at? Show them. It's all over the Amazon. You can get it. You can get my uh, podcast on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon. Any book company you go to, if they don't have the book in stock, you give them the title of the book, they'll order it, and you'll have it within two days. Make sure you guys Amazon, go check it Amazon out. Amazon is the biggest one, huh? Telling people to go check it out. Do you have any pics yeah. with you? Someone said, "Yeah." do you have any pics of you with any of these guys? No. I've been no, having a hell of a time trying to find something. She said, I've been trying to find something about you, which isn't bad. A bad thing. Uh, so many guys are coming online making up stories and shit. Well, I was already proven, so I'm not even worried about that. So I, I was already proven on what I am and what I've done. I don't have any pictures with the guys. The, F the only pictures that are around me is what the FBI has, surveillance pictures. I think it's important I to shut people down that think think you may be untruthful there's anything i have can be corroborate the story you have anything that can corroborate the story yeah my prison record 
<laughs> Organized crime and racketeering, loan shark and extortion and conspiracy. My prison record, two terms in the federal penitentiary. I'm sure you could look it up. They can look it up. There ain't no problem. Yeah, man. Um, I think there's a lot of jealous people out there. There's a lot of people that uh, they just wish they did some of the things that you did in your life, man. My cousin taught me, my cousin Mac and them taught me, don't be taking pictures all the time. Don't, and I didn't take no pictures. I mean, a couple of family functions I was at, I took a couple of pictures as far as it went. Any pictures there are of me that they're in the FBI files that they have the surveillance pictures. I didn't flash and I didn't do like everybody does. They flash around these big ass cars. I didn't do that. I did what I did. I had my money. I put my money where I had to put my money and I took my time and did what I wanted to do. I didn't go around flashing and dashing all over the place. No, that's how you attract attention. And like you were telling me, um, a lot of people that the city's a big city, man. You're not going to know every gangster in the whole city. Fuck no. And not every gangster in the city is going to know me. Not every gangster in the country is going to know each other. No. No. I've done business with the Savellas, Tony Savella, Carl Savella. I was away with Carl, with Tony Savella. We did a lot of business there with the bosses of Kansas City. Lundy Provenzano did a lot of business with him and his brother Tony. When Tony was out, I dealt a lot. I dealt a lot with uh, Connecticut, all over the place. Someone wanted to know what brigada were you in? Excuse me? What brigada were you part of? I was in the Colombo family. Um, but my bosses, my bosses in the Colombo family was Jerry Lang and Big Ali Persico. They were the boss and the other the acting boss and the other bosses. Someone said, did you know Michael Francis? I met Michael Francis twice. One time when I came out of Monty's restaurant, Andrew introduced me to him. Hello, how are you? That was it. Another time I was going in and he was coming out. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Anthony, how you doing? That's as far as it went. Michael was not one of my favorite people. I knew his father very well, Sonny. His father was very close to my father also. Yeah, a lot of you. And his, you father, have a and his father, his father was also close with my father's cousin, Tony Napoli, uh, Jimmy Napoli, and my cousin, Tony Napoli. Um, he said he never met you, but that was a long time ago. Who? Uh, Michael Francis. Michael said he met me. I don't know. Uh, they just yeah. put this. He said he never met you, but that was a long time ago. Uh, Michael someone, Francis said that was somebody else was saying it. No, somebody else is saying that about Michael Francis. Obviously, he's not here watching this unless he is. Maybe he is. Wait, wait, wait. Some, Michael Francis told somebody he never met me, but no. that was a long time ago. I think so, yes. I think that Michael Francis said that he never met you. He said he never met you, but that was a long time ago. He said that to this person. What? He said it to them. To who? The person, Lexi Johnson, man. Who's the guy? You didn't give me the fucking guy's name. Give me the guy's name. No. Lexi Johnson. It's a, a person that's watching the show left a comment oh. saying Michael Francis told her he never heard of you. Or he never met you before. Never met me. First of all, he's saying a lot of things that he'd done. And I got a lot of different uh, things that he uh, changed around. Things that he said about people he used to hang out with all the time. And then he said, well, I didn't know him that good. I'm going to do that in another, in another tape that I'm going to put out. Michael, I told you, I met him twice. Andrew introduced me to him when I was leaving Monty's and he was down there. Anthony, this is Michael. Michael, this is Anthony. Okay. What, what year was this? Okay. What year? That was back in the 70s. That was in the cell, about 70, about 77, 78. Yeah, I remember it was cold. 
It was, it was cold. cold. And yeah. It was cold out. So it was either between, say, November 77 to, say, March of 78. In between there, I, I just hello and goodbye. And another time I was coming down, he goes, hey, Mike, how you doing? Hey, Anthony, how you doing? Bingo, that was it. We didn't have no what about right. what about Greg Scarpa? Did you have any uh, Greg, dealings I with him? Greg, Greg, I knew Greg. Yes, I did know Greg. Greg used to come to Cowell Street and Third Avenue. As a matter of fact, uh, Michael Francis is saying that he always came to Cowell Street. In one of his tapes, he says he always came to Cowell Street and Third Avenue and the Montes with Greg Scarpa. That they were friends and they hung out and this, that, and whatever. Then there's another version of when he's talking about the Colombo War that he says, well, you know, yeah, I knew Greg Scarpa, not that we were friends or we didn't hang out. So which is it? You either fucking hung out with him or you fucking didn't. <laughs> and I got that tape. And I got the tape. So Michael, you know, he says one thing and then says something else. Hey, well, maybe we'll make a thing uh, proving the bullshit. So, Ernesto, thank you. I appreciate you, man. Who? Uh, Ernesto left a comment. What did he say? Just saying, uh, keep up the good content. What about this girl that was said that she spoke to Michael Francis? She said she that on? she asked, uh, yeah, she's on there. She asked uh, about a lot of people, not just you. Ask what? Did you know, I want to know. Joe, Joe Waverly? Did you know Joe Waverly? Joe Kukesh. Yes, I knew Joe. I just knew him at that. He was on the other side of the family. Yeah, there was. Uh, you were you were around in the early part when there was a, the first war, right? There was. Was it there it a couple wars? Seventies and in the nineties. Yeah. So this. Who girl, else? Who else? Her name, what? Who else was there around that that you were good friends with? Well, you had, Someone's... Uh, you had Greg brother, you had Ralphie Spiro and uh, and uh, Tommy Spiro. They both got whacked. They were dead. Chevy Lang, Scappy, Little Vincent, Baby Jean was another guy. Michael Bellino, just an tons couple, of guys. Right? Uh, uh, Tony DeGawk, who was a good friend of mine, who Michael has something to say about how good of a friend he was. That Tony went to him for protection, which I can't see, but Tony DeGawk. I was around Kakai Al, which was Ali Lamont, Christy Tick, Christy Fionari, from the Lucchese people, who was there. Consuieti was a good friend of mine. Tato Marina was another good friend of mine. I used to have dinner with him uh, maybe twice a month up at the Dixie Tavern. Take your choice. <laughs> Is there any tough Portuguese guys uh, out in the Romano, neighborhood? Uh, my Romano was another friend of mine. Did you know Wild what? Bill Cotolo? Did you know Wild Bill Cotolo? I knew, I knew Bill very well. I knew Wild Bill. I knew Bill very well. Very well, I knew him. Wild Bill, I told you once before, he started out, he was with Joe Lane. Mm -hmm. Then once he got straightened out, he started going up through the ranks. Nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. Believe me when I tell you. Yeah, I, I keep hearing that about him, that he was a real good guy. Oh, yeah. Hopefully I could get his son on my show. Vinny Alloy and Benny Alloy were their good friends of mine. I knew them very well. Uh, them. Guy Anthony Black, who's still alive. He's in Florida. I knew him. I haven't seen him in years. In years. It's got to be, oh, wait, well, 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 over 10 years, maybe more since I've seen do you him. Ever, do you ever run into any of I the guys that you Johnny used to Irish. associate with? Wait, hold on. Johnny Irish, which is Johnny Matera, was a good friend of mine. Jimmy Angelina. The father and the son were both friends of mine. I, I even I knew quite a few guys. One of you, one of your old buddies that you did a good favor for, man. I guess they got out of prison and you helped them get a job, and uh, you helped them get a place to stay or something. They hit they they reached out to me and they said that you were a stand up guy and uh, that you you helped them out a lot. I helped anybody. That was friends of mine that came out of prison. Nikki Black? Oh, Nikki Gronko. I knew Nikki Black very well. I used to go Little to the Nikki's bar that he had on the FGU. What about uh, Nikki, Little Vic? Nikki, I liked him a lot, but unfortunately, Nikki went to the other side. 
to the other faction, right? Yeah, the other side. He went to the other faction. So when they when they split apart, um, did they yeah. have their own? Did they did they make their own underboss and their own boss on each side? On each side. In other words, we were on the side with Carmine. They were on the side with Joe Waverly, which is Joe Cacase and all them, uh, Billy Catullo. And that's what that's who they were the bosses on that side. The kid Ralph Scorpo, his father was a friend of mine at one time, Ralphie Scorpo. The kid Joey Scorpo was a friend of mine until he got whacked. But he went to the other side. Yeah. That's crazy how uh how a family can cut right down the middle like that and split. It's power. Power goes yeah. to your head. And whoever got whoever yeah, like what so what was this whole situation over? Why did they even start uh, feuding? Why did they what? Why did they start this whole war? Why was it? What was it over? Over power. They wanted to take control of the family. They didn't want Junior to be the head of the family no more. Cause how long did he have? How how long did Persico have control? About forty years since the seventies till he died. Yeah, they tried. They tried to bump them right out of there, huh? Yeah. A lot a lot of people died in that war, man. Oh yeah, quite a few people, yeah. Hank the What's bank, up, Grim? What's up, Grim Sleeper, man? Someone just said what up. Um someone said, Who is this mob squad? This is Anthony Luciano Ramundi. Go watch, go check out his book when the bullet hits the bone. And you'll be able to know all about who this guy is. I was not one to stay in the limelight all the time, especially for certain things that I was doing. I wasn't going to stay in the limelight. You got to be a fool to stay in. You stay in the limelight, you wind up with a million years. Yeah, you would have got a hundred years with the rest of them dudes. I would have got more than that. Someone said, what did you think of Ralphie... The Leo. Delio? No. Ralphie Delio you know? was not a friend of mine. No? No. I didn't associate with him, but the Delio. Someone Ralph, said Carmine no, was, was in... Huh? What? Someone yeah, said Carmine was... was in, <laughs> you keep talking. Go ahead. It was you Ralphie talk. Delio... Joey DeLeo, DeLeo, Jimmy DeLeo, I didn't associate with them. Um, Like Peanuts was in our family. We had a guy, Peanuts, who was in our family. It was a it was a big shot also. Someone said, did they let you have the... I don't know about Peanuts. What? Someone said, did they let you have the Fu Manchu? They didn't no. make you shave? No. No, I, didn't, I, was, I was shaved, yeah. They used to call him Mustache Pete's, right? That's the old timers. Yeah. The old timers, yeah. Did you have the mustache back then? No. No, I was clean shaven. Someone said, uh, I know a bunch of crazy Portuguese from uh, Jersey. Pretty tough guys. Yeah. You, you're dealing with a lot of races, right? A lot of different races. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I've dealt with Spanish. I dealt with... Basically, I dealt with Spanish or Puerto Rican, if you want to call it, and, the black, and black. And that's the white. Like, um... Like, uh, different ethnicities, like, uh... Like, Meyer Lansky, what would you consider his, um power level to be? Would he be able to pretty much do anything he wanted? Maya Lansky's power level would be as a say power level as a boss at the time. Yeah, man. He could pretty much do anything he wanted, right? Yeah. So I Anthony, what do you think of these Albanians that are obsessed with the Italian mafia? <laughs> I don't know. I've never did any business with Albanians since I've been out of the business. Have you ever heard of John A. Light? 
No. How about yeah, Jimmy cool. Calandria? Have you heard about Jimmy Calandria from the Bath Avenue? No. I mean, Calandria, the name is from, the name is a common name up there, but I didn't know the guy personally. Do you know John DeRoss? Who? John DeRoss? Johnny DeRoss? If it's a guy I'm thinking of, it's Jackie DeRoss's cousin. Someone says, do you know Gene the Machine from Connecticut? No. The guy I knew I knew from Connecticut that I was uh, friendly with was Billy Grasso. Now, there were two Billy Grassos. One guy, Billy Grasso, they whacked him in his own, they, his own crew whacked him. We used to have a book, a sports book going back and forth from Connecticut. I used to go up every Sunday to, it was exit, uh, I think it was exit 11. There was a holiday in. It was either exit 11 or 13. I'm pretty sure it was exit 11. And then they changed it from the holiday in to the, called it the Drangoon Racket Club. Don't ask me the fuck why. We used to meet up there every Sunday morning for breakfast. He'd give me the ribbon, which was in other words, all the bets from Connecticut, the payouts and everything. They got their end, and I brought our end back to New York. And yeah. then from there, from there, we uh, the FBI caught wind of us over there. And what we done, we went to, uh, I think it was Darien. I think it was Darien, Connecticut. I'm not sure. I think, I think it was Darien. I'm not 100% sure. There was a place called the Rustic Grotto. A friend of ours, Angelo, had it. And then we used to meet over there. Was um, a lot of Connecticut is Genovese territory, right? Well, you have a lot of Colombo up there also. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, you got a lot of Colombo up there. Someone said all these guys on except Francis would be after his time. Were you around any Gallo guys? Any of the Gallo guys? The only ones out of the Gallos that I was formally introduced to was um, was Kid Blast, which is Albert Gallo, who's still around. He's about close to ninety. He's close to ninety, and I was uh, and I knew Punchy Iliano, Frankie Iliano. Frankie passed away a couple of years ago. Those are the only two guys in the Gallup boys that I got formally introduced to years ago. Can you tell us about whacking the Pope? No, it's in my book. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blow my book deal. I'm not gonna blow my movie deal. Then buy the book and you'll get part one. When book two comes out, you buy it, you get part two. Or you listen to my podcast. Go check out when the bullet hits the bone. All the stories are in there. And my podcast is called The Enforcer. And I got the stories in there also. All right. Someone said, do you know Joe Tommaso? Tomasello. Who? Joe Tomasello. Name is for me. I know the name, but I can't picture the guy. Right? I can't picture the guy. I know the name. Someone said Billy Grasso and his kids are legit, but the realest gangsters who ran Connecticut was Anthony Tony Velope. Who? Tony Velope. Anthony Tony Velope. Velope. Or son. Velope. When did you get out of the life, Anthony? Oh, geez. I got out in uh, 2000 and. 2010. Matter of fact, you know who was up there who ran Connecticut also was uh, Tommy DeBreezy. And Tommy Frankie DeBreezy. Piccolo. Tommy DeBreezy he was with the Gambinos. He was the boss of the Gambinos up there. And before him, it was Frankie Piccolo. Now, I don't know what they're saying about Billy Grasso, but Billy Grasso had a lot of power. Can you read this? No, I can't. Someone said a uh, cigar question. What's what the is? best? Men Menduro? The best you can buy wasn't made in Connecticut. Any Perique Menduro? I don't know what the hell that is. Menduro? Are they talking about Menduro? 
Yeah. Maduro cigar. Maduro is a very strong cigar. Do you have any Scarpa stories, Greg Scarpa stories? A couple, but they're in the book. They're in book two. So that's why I'm not going to say because I put them in book two. We're ready. Was Larry Mazza a friend? Was he made back then? I don't remember ever meeting Larry Mazza. I, I only know what I hear him saying that they made him in some unorthodox fucking ceremony, which to me, I never heard of a ceremony being done like that. Yeah, they said they didn't prick his finger. Right. It was, all they, it's, about because of they said because of AIDS. All I know is with me, when I got straightened out, they cut my finger. AIDS are no fucking AIDS. They cut my fucking finger, and we did the whole thing. So I Yeah, mean, they don't. Look, but they don't maybe it was a different story. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know but when two factions break apart and then people are straightening out people, I don't know, man. That's that's like up in the air. Who knows? Right. Because uh, <coughs> I got straightened out back in the 70s. Larry's saying he got straightened out in the 90s, I believe. Somewhere around there. I, ha I, I have it on the video. I did a, I, I interviewed old, Larry. How old? I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. 50 something? I'm at least 10, 12, 13, 14 years older than Larry. I'm pretty sure it's 50 something. He's got to be. I'm, um, I'm, over, I'm, 10, I'm more than 10 years older than Larry. So you know, I you know, out, I think it was something different. Huh? Tony the Greek? Did you know Tony the Greek? You mean Tony the Gork or Tony the Greek? Tony the Greek. Frank, Franco's? No. Volpe? Who? I don't fucking know. I can't even. Volpe or some Funzi shit? Thierry was, I was friendly with Funzi Thierry. I know Funzi very well. Scribelli? Mike Scribella. I knew him real well. He's another friend of mine. Carmichael Lenti was a cousin to my grandfather. Did you know Gerald Papa? Who? Gerald Papa. Papa. No. No, it wasn't for me with him. Stax, you're a hick? I'm a hick. Why? The fuck you mean I'm a hick? I don't live in the woods, motherfucker. I live in the city. Not really. It's kind of like people half. People are jealous. Go fuck yourself. How about that? Don't even, don't even pay no attention to that. Right. You can't be made during the war, someone said. I can't what? Someone said you can't be made in the war. You can't be made. Someone said he's 60 years old. Mazza. If Larry's 60, I mean, maybe he is 60. I'm 67. All right, but when I got straightened out was in 1979. He's talking about he got straightened out, I think he said. I don't know if he said in the 90s. I really don't remember when he said he got straightened out. Kevin D. Someone said, come on, Stax. You're too smart. This guy's not real. Tell Kevin he's been jerking off in the corner too much. Tell Go Kevin read the book, him. Kevin. Thanks for the view. Brandon and nobody. What do you think Who? of Nikki Black, right? See what what did he think of Nikki Black? Nikki Black, I liked him. I liked Nikki. Nikki was a good guy. He was close. He was with Angel. He came down. He always did the right thing. And just that when the split in the family came, he went to the other side. We used to go, I used to go down to this bar on Avenue U. Well, my cousin Johnny Dell had a club across the street from him. And then when I used to go see Nikki, we used to go to Joe's uh, Avenue U, you know, the Vastad and Parnell place. We used to eat over there. Me and Someone Nikki said Junior. Be, be, me and Nikki would be in there eating so much, they probably threw us out of the fucking place. Eat them out of house and home and shit. Oh, fuck Someone, yeah. Someone said Junior Persico ordered both Jimmy and Larry to be made. 
Jimmy and Le who Jimmy? I don't know. Didn't even write down who. I don't know who Jimmy they're talking about. Larry, I don't know. As far as I know, <laughs> yes, Junior was the Larry. boss. He ordered them both to be made. You can't find anything legit on this guy, someone said. Yeah. Call the FBI. Go look up the FBI documents. FBI. There's a difference when you fly under the radar and you don't fly under the radar. There's a difference when you become, when you make yourself, you put yourself out there in front of everybody, okay? And you don't put yourself out there in front of everybody. I stood in the background, did what I did, what I was called upon, do what I had to do. I did what I did, and that's it. I came home. Where were you sent in Vietnam and what year? Vietnam, I got there in 71. How long did you stay there for? I did four tours. At one time, I was going to make a career out of the military, but when they turned around and gave the country back to the Vietnamese, that's why I decided, fuck that, I'm coming back home. Chez Bai? Chez Bip? Who the hell is that? You ever go to the know. Chez Bip? Chez Bip? No. Greg Scarpa lived on Avenue U. Huh? Someone said. Someone said Greg Scarpa lived on Avenue U. I don't know about did you, that. Did you know Big Dingo or Big Dino or Little Dino? I knew the Dinos, yes, from uh, from the Columbos, yes. So, <laughs> someone I said to you. Yeah, they want to know your opinion. These are guys that should have never been made and guys I would have never trusted, but they were but somebody but somebody liked them and that's why they put them in power. Oh yeah, Jimmy was uh Larry's friend, like his uh you know, his partner, like uh okay. his boy that he he would always be with. I don't know right. I don't I don't know that guy. No, I never I don't know. Someone's fucking around. They said, did you know Colonel Sanders? <laughs> yeah, Colonel Sanders still sells me chicken. I'm shaking it down for chicken every week. <laughs> every week, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Wasn't he next to Jesus on the cross? <laughs> What'd he say? Someone said, wasn't he next to Jesus on the cross? No, I'm the one who put him on the cross. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Why are you hating on Larry? No, I'm no one's hating on Larry, man. I don't got a problem with none of these guys. I, know Larry. Listen, I I know Larry. I don't listen. I got a problem with none of these YouTube wars. I'm not getting involved with none of that, man. I'll have anybody on my show. Nice. It's people are just they want drama. That's what they want. Of course. Never hating on Larry, man. I got that. I don't know Larry, so I cannot say something about somebody that I don't personally know. I met Larry through the podcast, and uh, I interviewed him a couple times. Seemed like a good dude. Like, well, yeah, he his book. From, what his, from what I see on his videos, he seems like a good guy. Yeah, he sent me his book. I'm I'm cool with Jimmy. I'm cool with Larry. I'm cool with all these guys. I never met A Light. I haven't had him on the show. I don't know him, so I don't I don't really have an opinion on people, man. I'm just here to bring you guys some entertainment. Like you said, everybody wants to know everything. Everybody wants you to have you know, you know have uh, an argument with somebody. You're always gonna get somebody that tries to fucking ruffle your feathers so that they can say, Oh look what I done to him and whatever. Do I give a flying fuck what anybody thinks about me? No. You know why? I'm Someone... not going to tell you. <laughs> Let me finish. There's mm -hmm. a song by Jimmy Curry <laughs> Hendrix. The song is called If Six Was Nine. Now, at the end of the song, he says, let me live my life the way I want to. Because I'm, he said, no, he says, I'm the one that's got to die when it's time for me to die. So let me live my life the way I want to. And that's what I do. Do I give a fuck what some people think of me? No. You didn't have balls to do what I did? And that's your fucking headache. You're jealous of what I did? 
That's your fucking headache. You don't believe me? I don't give a fuck. I know what I did. Check with the FBI. They got all the fucking surveillance pictures of me in the fucking world with me and my cousin Mac and all over the fucking place. And at funerals I've been at and everything. I don't give two fucking flying shits what somebody thinks about me. That's it. I, I don't yeah, either. You guys... <laughs> go fuck yourself. Well, you don't believe I don't me or... give a flying fucking leap one way or the other. Everything that I've talked about was investigated from top to bottom by the best people, and they says, what's their answer? This is the real man over here, the real deal. Do you think I give a shit what somebody else thinks? No, I don't. Did you know my, uh, D- Dominic Montiglio? No. You can get Anthony's book at any um, any place that sells books, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. Do me a favor. Ask your viewers, did they ever hear of Michael Bellino? Michael Bellino. Have you ever heard of Michael Bellino, viewers? They can hear you, man. You know that, right? Okay, good. Now, Michael Bellino was Alley Boy, Big Alley Boy Persico. That was his chauffeur and his bodyguard. And Michael was a mad guy. You don't hear Michael's name mentioned all over the place. And Michael did a lot of work. He did a lot of work, Michael. Someone says you were on Pawn Stars trying to sell Lucky's ring. I'm on what? Someone said they saw you on Pawn Stars trying to sell Lucky Luciano's ring. Pawn Stars? Yeah, they had uh, some guy on there trying to sell Lucky Luciano's ring. Pawn this guy Pawn? says... This guy that said, wasn't how me, you, you fucking yeah. dopey, stupid cocksucker. That wasn't <laughs> me. And first of all, I saw that episode. The one with the devil's face on it. That wasn't yeah. my uncle's ring. My uncle never had a ring like that. I got his someone, ring that he left. Someone said, uh, hey, how did, ring. Someone said, how did you do four tours in Vietnam when the troops left in 73? Uh, excuse me, drank off. The war didn't end until uh, February 75 is when we had to pull out. Go check your fucking records, idiot. Troops didn't leave in 73. <laughs> 75 is when the war ended. We gave them back the country, and that's when everybody started coming home. It's 1975, February. Jerk off. <laughs> Fuck it. You that's fucking that. jerk offs. <laughs> Bunch of jerk jerk off. Off. You got it. probably jerks off in some fucking corner. You gotta tell me when Vietnam ended. Yeah, okay. Hey, they weren't there, man. Huh? People are uh I don't know, if they don't see like pictures of you killing somebody, they don't believe you. I don't give a fuck. I don't you care either, man. Shit. Bill, you did I get I don't have I'm, pictures of me killing somebody. Get the fuck out of here, please. I'm just, I'm just trying to sell some books so I can get my you know, car, man. Don't, you know, the, the people who talk like that, they watch too much television and believe what you see on TV. They watch too much television. I know. People watch uh, Goodfellas and think they're... Uh, <laughs> it's funny how people Goodfellas, think they know story better than you. Three quarters of that movie, Goodfellas, is bullshit. I know. That's number one. So, it, someone said, "Uh, it's funny. It's it's funny how people think they know the story better than you know your own story." It's not right. a story. It was my life. well, you could call it my life story. Yeah. I mean, Have you ever had any dealings with the Ice Man? I never met him. No. Kuklinski. No, never met him. He was in. He was in. Uh, What's his name's crew? The guy that they killed. Uh, uh fuck, I forgot. Uh, uh, I forgot his name. Um, uh, the guy's own crew whacked him. Uh, I forgot his fucking name. It'll come to me. Someone said he shook down my friend's cousin. <laughs> I Who did Anthony? Did. Huh? Anthony, you probably did, Anthony. How about DeMayo, I man? I, I down legitimate people. Did you I have any... Uh, yeah, it was only people in the life, right? Yeah. Because who are they going to fucking run to? They're going to run to their own people. 
I don't. The guy did this, he did that, and I win. Give me the fucking money every week. Roy DeMeo. That's who Kuklinski was with. Roy DeMeo. Yeah. I couldn't think of his name for a second. Roy DeMeo, his own crew killed him. Did you uh, ever run into him? What? Or Tom? Twice. What about Tommy Karate? No, Tommy Karate, I never I never ran into Tommy Karate. What's good? What's good? I forgot he. <laughs> How you, you ever go to you ever go to the Gemini Lounge? That's Roy DeMeo's place. Yeah, I he wasn't twice. there? Twice I, didn't bring... I had to go see somebody. I had to see didn't... somebody up there. That's why I went there. They didn't bring you in the basement? <laughs> not me. Obviously not. You walked out, right? People say Kuklinski was never with the Gambinos. I don't think he was. I have no... Listen, this guy Kuklinski, I never met him. And I don't believe he killed 200 men either. That I don't believe. Someone said Anthony smacked up a guy that I know. Who, me? I believe it. Yeah. Who was the guy I hit? I hit a lot of guys in my day. He lost on a horse or something, they said. There was a lot of guys I hit that lost on horses and they didn't want to pay. What about Tommy Simone? Oh, yeah, I knew Tom. Yes, I did. Contrary to what the book says, or not the book, excuse me, the movie, that they were going to make Tommy D. Simone, Tommy was already a made guy. He was? That's right. And yeah, the at the end, they killed him. At the end, they killed him. No, 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 no. Listen, listen to me. Let me talk. Tommy was already a made guy. And in book two, I have how they killed him. They promised him that they were going to make him a lieutenant. That's how they got him to the meeting. And the guy who shot him just got his button that night after he killed him. For real? For real. Did it, did it happen too. like that? Did it happen like that a lot? Like uh, people would have to put in a piece of work and then they would get their button like right the away? Get, that's the only way you could get made. You had to do a piece of work. Yeah, or otherwise you weren't getting it, right? You can't get made. Now they're making guys for whatever the reason. They don't even do a piece of work and they're making guys. That's bullshit. Keanu is... I know. Oh, comedy. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. You, you fucking people, man. A Luciano is A-Light's idol. What happened? With what all the... Say? I don't know. The, the, the Cavacante family, did you have any dealings with them? Cavacante family. I knew the people up over there. What did this guy say about Luciano? You're talking shit. What did he say? Tell me. He just said uh, something about fucking that you were Luciano's A-Light's uh, son about being an idol or some shit. Did you know Dracula? No, but I knew your mother when I fucked her last night. <laughs> D. Simone was not a made guy, someone said. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. They lured him in. They straightened him out. Shortly after they straightened, they straightened him out. About maybe four or five months that he was straightened out. They got him to come to the... He started getting worse and worse. They told him they were going to make him a uh, lieutenant. He went to the meeting. There was people there. And I got it in my book. And the guy who popped him got made that night. Yes, I am getting uh, Hootie's 302s. And I am doing a story about him. I'm done with this dude. I'm going to bury him. And uh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry I got to do it to you, but I do. I got to do it. <laughs> that one's coming soon. They got to do what's got to be done. Hey, man. If you're a rat, you're a rat. Admit it. You know? That's Take your lumps, talk. man. Huh. Hootie was never proposed. Hootie's a, Hootie's a rat, man. 
And, and uh, Vlad, Vlad didn't pay. What? Vlad didn't. Vlad, Vlad didn't pay Hootie nothing. Vlad don't pay people for interviews, man. Right. I did the interview with Vlad. I didn't get paid either. No, they don't pay you. No, he's so Hootie's going around saying he got paid for that shit. <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. Hootie's a scumbag, man. I hope he jumps off a bridge. Well, where is he now? <laughs> Who knows? Probably in a dope den. I don't know. Well, who's the other guy you had a problem with? Any Anyone that doesn't like me, I got a problem with. No, there was Hootie, and who was the other guy that was doing the show? I don't know. It was me and Hootie. That was it. Who's the guy in prison? Nah, I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's not talk about that. Okay. Yeah, uh... Hootie is not working for FedEx, man. Hootie got fired like two years ago from FedEx. I don't want to talk about that scumbag, man. But anyway, bro, I got to go eat dinner. Thank you for joining <laughs> me today, man. <laughs> go ahead, dinner. Uh, you guys, go out and get Anthony's book. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it anywhere that sells books. Go check it out. Right, if they don't have it in stock, you order, they'll order it for you. And then I got the podcast, The Enforcer, season one. Ten episodes. Yeah, and, and you got book two coming out, right? Book two will be out next year. So make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. And uh, I'll have Anthony on again. So get your questions ready and make sure you keep doing the hating because we love it. And for all you haters, go fuck yourself, huh? Fuck you. <laughs> Later, man. Jerk off in some fucking corner. You tell them. <laughs> Go jerk off in the corner, huh? That's all. Fuck them. Yeah, fuck them. All right, man. Thank you.